For this video, we are going to be discussing slope. So what is slope? Slope is really just a measure of how steep a line is. It can also be described as the rate of change between two variables. And another way that a lot of people like to describe slope is that it is the rise divided by the run. With rise being your change in what change in y value or your change in height and run being your change in x value or change in uh, horizontal distance. So it's going to be our vertical distance divided by our horizontal distance. And it's given by this formula right here. All right. Now this triangle we call delta. This is delta y, which just means the change in y, and delta x, which just means the change in x. But really the slope formula we need to talk about is this formula right here, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Basically all that means is if I give you two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, I simply take a y, the y value minus the y value and divide that by the x value minus the x value. That's all we need to do to find the slope. That will tell us exactly how steep our line is. So, we have four different types of slope that we're going to be dealing with. We've got positive slope, negative slope, zero slope, and undefined slope. So let's take a look at what these look like. Positive slope is when if you start at the left and you move towards the right of your graph, you're going up. Think of this as an upward sloping hill. We always want to be looking from left to right. So this is a positive slope because it's going up. So similarly, negative slope slopes down when I go left to right. A zero slope is just a flat horizontal line. All right. So zero slope is always, always, always going to be a horizontal line. And then if you think for a second, you could probably take a guess what an undefined slope is going to look like. And that is going to be a vertical line. All right. This line is straight up and down. And that means we don't really have a number that we can use to define the slope. So we just say that it is undefined. And what we're going to find is when we go to calculate slope using points, that we end up with zero on the bottom of our fraction, which gives us an undefined number. So vertical lines are always going to give us undefined slopes. So how are we going to figure out the slope? Well, there are a number of different ways. One of them is determining the slope from an equation. And when an equation is written in slope-intercept form, then the slope is simply the coefficient of x. And slope-intercept is this form right here, y equals mx plus b. Get used to seeing this equation. We're going to be using this form of an equation all the time this year. And this is very simply the equation of a line where I've got my y value. This m is my slope multiplied by my x value plus b, which is my y-intercept. And this is the form of the line we're going to be using all the time. So to put an equation into slope-intercept form, all I need to do is solve for y like a literal equation. So let's take a look at an example. Here's example one. We want to find the slope of the line given by this equation, 12x plus 4y equals 8. So what we need to do is we need to solve for y in this equation. And once we've done that, Whatever our coefficient of x is, is going to be our slope. So we're going to start. We've got 12x plus 4y equals 8. I know that my first step is simply going to be to subtract 12x on both sides. So I'm trying to get y by itself. If we remember back to literal equations. So if I do that, I get 4y equals 8 minus 12x. Now I need to get rid of that 4, so I'm going to divide my entire equation by 4. I get y on the left, 8 divided by 4 is 2, 12 divided by 2 divided by 4 is 3, so I get y equals 2 minus 3x, and I want to rewrite it as y equals negative 3x plus 2. So now, this is in slope-intercept form, we can think of this as y equals mx plus b, where b is our constant uh, y-intercept. 
and our slope is simply negative 3. All right. Once we've got this solved for y, then whatever our coefficient of x is, that is our slope. So if we think about this, if we draw a graph, if we say, all right, here's our xy intercept. Let's call this point right here 2, or 0, 2. All right, because we know that the slope is negative 3, this is going to be a line that looks like this. Okay, it's a downward sloping line. All right, so this isn't the only sort of situation where we're going to need to find the slope. Sometimes we're going to have to determine the slope if we're just given two points. So whenever we are just given two points, we're going to find the slope using this slope formula. y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's take a look at an example. We're going to find the slope between these two points, 2, 3, and negative 3, 6. So the first thing I want to do is I want to look at these and I want to define what is x1 and what is y1. Well, I'm just going to take one of my sets of ordered pairs. It actually doesn't matter which one, but I'm going to choose this one. And I'm going to call the x value here, that's x1. And then the y that goes with it is also going to have a 1 on it, that's y1. Then obviously these are going to have to be x2 and y2. All right, it's important that you keep the variables together. That's the whole purpose of putting these 1s and 2s on here. So you know that 2 and 3 are an ordered pair, and negative 3 and 6 are an ordered pair. So now we're just going to plug our numbers into the slope formula. We know m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And a common mistake people make here is that they put the x's in the numerator, the y's in the denominator. You've got to be careful. Always the y on top, x on the bottom. So because we're saying that y2 is 6 and y1 is 3, on top we're going to have 6 minus 3. On the bottom, x2 is negative 3, x1 is 2, so I get negative 3 minus 2, which gives me 6 minus 3 is, five, is 3, negative 3 minus 2 is 5, or negative 5, and that can't be simplified, so our slope simply negative 3 fifths. So all we did is we use this formula right here, and we plug our numbers into it to get our slope. All right, so we're going to be determining slope from a graph. And the way we do this is we just pick two points on the line and apply the slope formula. Another way we can think about this, and this graph kind of demonstrates it, is because we're saying that slope is going to be rise over run, there are a couple ways we could do this. We could apply the full slope formula. Or if we're trying to find the slope, for example, between 1, 2, and 2, 5, well, I can just go, well, if I draw myself a line down from 2, 5 and over from 1, 2, I can just count, all right, if I start at 1, how many spaces to the right do I need to move to get to this line here? Well, I just go over 1, so 1 is our change in x, and then how far do I have to go up? Well, I go up 1, 2, 3 places. So my slope is 3 over 1, or just 3. All right? Or we could just do this, or we could do this the long way, where we do 5 minus 2. If I say this, let me make this x2, y2, x1, y1 over here. I can do 5 minus 2 divided by 2 minus 1 which still gives me 3 over 1, which still gives me 3. So I can kind of just count spaces, or I can apply the formula. So let's look at example number 2. Example number, or I'm sorry, example number 3. Example number 3 says, find the slope of the line. So, how are we going to find the slope of this line? Well, the key thing to do is that we have to identify two points. So the points that I'm going to use are 0, negative 3, that point right there, and 2, 1. I like to point, pick points that are on the grid lines because they're what, are we call, what we call integral coordinates. Okay, 
The reason they're called integral coordinates is because the coordinates are made of integers. All right, so one way we can do this to find the slope is we just figure out how far, how far do we go up and how far do we go over. We just do the rise over run method. I'm gonna actually move this over. So we could do the rise over run method. And the way we do that, well, we just think, how many spaces do I need to move up to go from this point to this one? Well, I move one, two, three, four spaces up. And how many spaces do I need to move over? One, two spaces over. So my slope is four over two, or just two. All we did was just count up spaces and count over spaces. Now the other way of doing this is to use the slope formula. And you need to get used to using the slope formula because a lot of times you won't have the picture. So if we use the slope formula, oops, I kind of wrote all over it. We know m, oops, still writing all over it. We know Maybe I'll get this right. Try this one more time. We know m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So let's go label these. x1, y1, x2, y2. All I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in y2 minus y1, so 1 minus negative 3 x2 minus x1, 2 minus 0. 1 minus negative 3 is the same thing as 1 plus 3, which gives me 4. 2 minus 0 is 2. 4 divided by 2 gives us 2. So either way we want to do this, by applying our formula or by simply counting spaces, we still get a slope of 2. All right, so I'm going to leave you with three try -it problems simply need to find the slope of the line in each situation. This graph, this set of ordered pairs, and the, I'm sorry, this equation, this set of ordered pairs, and this graph. Let's go ahead and try this problem. 